morning cornerstone. How are you doing this morning? It's a beautiful day out there, isn't it? And I, uh, I was thinking about the get together for the desserts. I keep thinking about that. And I think there's cupcakes on the stage. I think that's so that if I pass out, maybe somebody could run get me one. It might be a sugar thing. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I want to mention to you, I love God's word. And I'm going to challenge you with something. If you look in your bulletin, there are two cards. It's the same scripture. And it's Romans 8, 28. I quote it all the time. And I use it all the time in my life. And I know that there are some of you that want to grow in the Lord. I know that. And there's no better way than to get the word in your heart. And so here's your challenge. Between now and Thanksgiving, I'm going to give you one of these a week. This is the longest one you'll have. The rest of them are even shorter. And uh, how many of you know this one already, pretty much? A bunch of you. See, you've, you've got this week down. And somebody said to me, I can't remember anything. Well, I might have said that in my lifetime. I can't remember anything. But the other day, somebody mentioned Pizza Hut. And I said, oh, I know their number. It's 842-7551. And they said... <laughs> And they said, when was the last time you called them? And I got to thinking, I think it was like 30 years ago. I never called them, ever. But I looked the number up to be sure I was right. I was right, 27551. So, so we can remember what we really set our mind to. But I want you to say this out loud with me. Are you ready? And if you need to read it, you can. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. Now next week, I will not test you on this. I will not ask you to stand and recite it. This isn't school, but I would really be thrilled if I say, how many of you got it memorized and you raise your hand? That's all you have to do. And if you choose to lie in church, that's between you and him, not me. So, so we're going to end with that. And then let's go to the Lord in prayer because God's got something good for you today. Lord, we just thank you right now for this time together. I thank you, Lord, that you want to get some word inside of us to get us stronger and stronger. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to give us ears to hear what the Spirit has to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Just almost hit the floor. That's good. Good going. Thanks, Tom. We'll see you at between 5 and 6 o'clock on October. They've got to save something for the next two weeks. <clears throat> so October the 2nd, between 5 and 6, and you will be contacted by Randy uh, as to what host or hostess you'll be going to. So it's, it's a good fellowship, good time. I think everyone will enjoy it. Now join for the um, announcements, the rest of the announcements that we have. First of all, we really want to thank everyone 
who's been a part of our services. That goes from the organ player to the pianist to the sound system to the liturgist and uh, just anybody that's involved with our services. We want to have a, a, a big thank you to them. <clears throat> we are going to have trunk or treat here at the church parking lot, so if you would, please start bringing candy donations uh, every Sunday until Halloween, and just leave it at the church office, or um, I don't know how, I, I think if you bring it, just bring it in to me, to the church um, on Sundays, there'll be someone there to collect it, and we'll put it in the office for safekeeping until Halloween. Um, the church picnic, we're going to have again this year, which is wonderful. It's going to be October the 23rd uh, after a regular service. So be sure and mark your calendar and get your thoughts on what it is you're going to bring for it. I think it, it was a grand time the last year, time we had it. It was wonderful. Um, and then please sign, be sure and sign up for the guess who's coming to dinner, uh, or guess who's coming to, for dessert. I mean, they might not like it very well if we tell the host and hostesses, guess who's coming to dinner? That might really flake them out here. So um, as far as next week, we want to be sure and remember the transition team meeting at 5 o'clock on Tuesday. Joyful Noise Bell rehearsal is at 5 o'clock on Wednesday, and at 6 o'clock is the chancel choir rehearsal. Thursday morning at 9, we have food pantry delivery. Always can use help on that. Please, if you've got the time to stop by and help, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Um, and then uh, next Sunday, the 25th, the Chancel Choir will be singing. They're going to be back in full force, so we're excited about that. <laughs> I know everybody's anxious for the choir to be back. Is there anyone else that has any announcements for this morning? Okay, would you please stand and join in the call, in the call to worship? <clears throat> Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord most high is awesome, the great king over all the earth. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Our opening hymn this morning will be hymn 154, I'll Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. We'll be singing first, second, fourth, fifth, and sixth verse. <laughs> Oh 
Please remain standing and join in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Are there any praises this morning? Somebody got something to praise about? No praises? All right, Rita's got one up here. All right, this is uh, Tony again. Uh, I had a wonderful time at the Fall Fun Fest, and I thought it was a great time to get together with everybody. It was. My praise is just a simple one. I think it's been a wonderful summer. We still have green grass. And the farmers start harvest this week, and I think they have had a pretty good year if they don't live on a river. So I'm praying. <laughs> Anybody else? A praise? How many of you went to a fun fest somewhere, fall celebration somewhere? All right, hands going up everywhere. Anybody else now? How about a concern? Uh, up in front. I'm going to get the boo-hoo, so get ready. <laughs> I got a phone call Friday uh, after work from Jeffrey. And Jeffrey let me know that he is having heart issues. They said he has heart disease. He's 35. Something about LAD, some kind of artery that's the widow maker. So that's what he has. Um, they're expecting surgery this next week to go in and, and clean, clean that out if they can. If not, they're going to put a stent in. Right. So I need prayers for Jeffrey. For Jeffrey. And then also <laughs> Friday evening at a little after 10 o'clock at night, one of my little dogs that I adopted, not the one that I took to U of I two weeks ago, but the other one, started throwing up terribly over 40 times within an hour and a half. So at midnight, I left for U of I and got there about 3.15 in the morning. And Pet uh, not Petrie, I'm sorry, Gus is in ICU, has been since Friday evening. They're gonna do an ultrasound tomorrow. They don't know what's wrong, if it's an obstruction or what's going on. So those of you that love your pets, I need prayers for little Gus. For Gus, got it. Yeah, uh, my sister Geraldine uh, went into AFib last week and her heart beat real fast. And uh, she uh, just got real scared. <laughs> Happened about three times in a row. She got like an electrical shock going on. She uh, about afraid she's about ready to go visit her husband. <laughs> and did you say her name's Geraldine? Geraldine. Okay. Used to Geraldine Fansler. She's oh, Jerry. To, okay, yeah, yes. Jerry. Okay, yeah. yeah. Continue to pray for Jane. Yeah, and she went to the doctor on the 14th, hoping for other news, and they said no, that it was ALS. So yeah. Okay. 
looks like we've got a lot to pray about, church. So uh, make a note of some of these things and pray this week for them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, right now, Lord, I know that your hand is on Jeffrey. I know that. And I pray, Father, that you just walk him through this surgery so easily. And, Lord, I just pray that you make him very aware of your presence there. I pray for Tanya as she has to go through this. And I pray for Gus, Lord. I pray they find out what's going on with him and get that straightened out. Lord, you've given us such wonderful pets, and I thank you for that. Lord, I pray for Jerry, healing for her body. Lord, I, I just pray strength for her. And Lord, let her know that you're with her too because she knows you well. And Lord, I pray for Jane Best, just continued strength for her in the days ahead. And, and just um, help her to think on you, Lord, because you have a plan. And Lord, I also pray just a thanksgiving for the crops, Lord, and the, the farmers that have been in the fields. I thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us and blessed us and blessed us. And we are eternally grateful for that. Lord, be with us during this service today. Just help us to hear you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I would like to mention on this next song, that's on me. It's in your bulletin. If you don't know it, you should know it. It's an awesome song. And I was surprised it wasn't in the book. How many of you know this song? Oh, great. Six of you. All right. <laughs> We shall begin. Well, I didn't know it, <laughs> and Corey didn't know it, and Janie didn't know it, and Tom didn't know it, so <laughs> it's going to be a good one. I am going to sing the first verse for you to kind of get an idea of where we're going. <laughs>
singing and the rest of you did really well. I love that song. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. It's time for an offering. Lord, we just thank you that you've given us the, the, the resources that we can give back to you, a blessing to you. Lord, we pray that you multiply it for your need in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Bells. Our scripture comes from Psalm 119, verse 32. I run in the path of your commandments, for you have set my heart free. Amen. Amen. Morning Bells. What a good way to start the day. I am, uh, this morning, I'm going to talk about running for joy. And uh, most of you don't know this, but I'm a runner. Well, of course I don't run five miles anymore. Well, not that I ever ran five miles at any one given time. Actually, five miles is probably the amount of miles I've run in my whole life, if the truth were be told. See, running looks like hard work to me. I've always thought that. It just looks like way too hard work for me, especially marathons. And I read recently a statement about Randolph Fiennes. Randolph was a man who ran the New York Marathon, New York City Marathon, which is really not anything big deal. But this man ran, it was his seventh marathon in seven days on six continents. So he set a record there, but he said this. This has been enjoyable throughout, except for the parts of running. <laughs> and I thought, that's me. That's me right there. Every time we run down the commandments, the paths of God's commandments, the Bible says we are running headlong into joy. How many of you could use a big bunch of joy in your life? Every one of us should be living with joy because we've got something the world doesn't have. We've got Jesus. You know, in Psalm 1611, it says, You make known to me the path of, your, of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. When I was studying on, on this, this morning God took me to uh, Philippians. And as I, as I got into the, to Philippians, and I should have had it marked 4-4, four, four, but in this, it says this, and, and I think we underestimate. We don't look at it as a command. We look at it as a suggestion. It is not. It says this, rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Do you know what they were talking about right before he put this in? There was two women in the church fighting. Eurotus and Sintiki. And they both were this. And so it says, Help those women which labored with me in the gospel with Clement also, and with other, my other fellow laborers, whose names are written in the book of life. If you don't have anything else to get excited about today, you need to get excited that your name is written in the book of life. You know, joy is a focus. It's where you focus. It's not a feeling. Joy isn't a feeling. It's where you keep your heart and your mind focused. And if you focus on the fact that, you know what? I may not be here five minutes from now, but I know where I'm going to be because my name is written in the book of life. If you've got that covered, you've got everything covered. I was hearing, a, I believe his name was Clayton. I just caught the tail end of it. It was kind of an unusual name. But he had been born and, and developed leukemia fairly early in life. And he battled it for several years. He was a young man at the time. And they told him this, at any moment, you can bleed out. At any moment. So you know, get to a hospital and we'll, we'll do what we can. He said, I have lived with the knowledge. I may not be here five minutes from now. And he said, the man that was telling the story said, we went with him. Uh, we were on a road trip and he said, we broke down. And everybody was, well, we broke down. You know, we got to be at this place. And not him, he just as calm, nothing bothered him. And he said, oh, it's going to be fine. And then something else happened. Another car broke down in their, in their group. And he, he said, it's just, it's going to be fine. He started having a nosebleed. And they knew they had to get him to the hospital. He was fine. He said, it's going to be all right. One way or the other, it's going to be all right. 
They got him to the hospital, and for 10 hours, they couldn't get it stopped. And so eventually, he passed away. And the man that was telling his story said, I have never seen a man walk in joy like he did. But he knew that it didn't matter. This stuff doesn't matter. Just because you, you put on an outfit this morning and it didn't look good on you, and you thought, oh, I put on some weight, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Just because you spilled a pot of beans on the floor, it doesn't matter. Just because you, you, you stumbled or you, something happened, it doesn't. This stuff down here doesn't matter, but this is what we focus on. And so we can't have joy. Stop focusing on this stuff and change the way you look at things, and you'll understand joy a little bit better. You know, when you first come into the kingdom, we're learning. And, and as you're in the kingdom longer, you're still learning. And as old as I am, I'm still learning. I, there never a day goes by that I don't learn something in God's kingdom. That's the way he planned it. But you see, part of that is because we want to do stuff fast. Well, I just want to be a good Christian fast. I, I don't want to Mickey Mouse around with his stuff. Let's just get to the bottom line here. That's kind of the way I live my life. I'm going to get to the bottom line, but you can't do that in this. It's always growing and changing. But it's like you can't see what's coming. It's like when Ben was born. You know, he was born, but he didn't know one day he'd crawl, but I knew it. And when he didn't realize, uh, you know, when he could walk, he didn't know one day there'd be a time he'd run, but I knew it. God sees you as you will be, not as you are, not as you were. So we're always going towards that place that God has for us. One of the things that God teaches us is on this path of joy is we can see God's intentionality. In other words, nothing happens to you by accident. Nothing. Now, there are times the enemy steps in and brings havoc in your life. But that verse that I just read you, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good. Yeah, but Melissa, you don't know how bad this is. All things work together for good. All things, even with puppy dogs, all things work together for good. All things. And I think sometimes we forget that, that God loves us. He loves his creation more than we can even understand. We don't even get the full depth of that. You know, years ago, I did a conference in Albion, and I was amazed. The Lord began to speak things through me, and I knew it was things that I didn't know, but I began to speak things. And there was a young lady that stood up, and she said in the, in the group, she said, I've had these things on my heart for years, but I, I, need to, I just need to, to admit, and I need to speak these things out. And she was holding some things in her heart that were not right, and she spoke it out that night. Another woman came up to me and she said, I've been carrying all this guilt and shame for years, for years. But what you said tonight changed me. I can't tell you what I said because the Lord was just speaking. Do you know that sometimes you can hear things that I don't say, but God's talking to you, to your heart. I know that because people will come up to me and they'll say, when you said this and this and this, that changed my life. And I'm thinking, I didn't say any of that. So I went back and got a tape and listened to it. I didn't say any of it. God doesn't need me. He can bypass me and go straight to you and tell you what you need to hear. You know, I watched God sweep through that place that night, and I thought, God... You get us. You get to us one way or the other. I'm convinced that we need to walk through life expecting to see God's intentionality. It's easier to see it when you turn around and go, oh, my gosh, he put that together with that, and that person showed up here, and, and this happened, and this happened. But when you're in the middle of it, it's not as easy to see. I, I want to tell you a story. Uh, in Isaiah 30, it says, Cry for help, and you'll find it's grace and grace and more grace. The moment he hears, he'll answer. Grace is really just God's unconditional love activated. 
That's what it is, in action. Kyle Sheets uh, was a, a, a surgeon, and he and his daughter Heather were in Zimbabwe, and they were doing a surgical procedure, and they were uh, treating an AIDS patient, and this was back several years ago when this was very, very, uh, well, it's still very serious, but at that time they didn't know a lot. But the doctor was working and had a cut on his hand. Heather saw it, but it was too late. He'd already been around this person, and of course they didn't have, uh, she was sick to her stomach. She thought, what am I gonna do? And she said to her dad, I want you to start taking this antiretroviral treatment and to prevent this HIV, and they put him on that. But it in itself is life-threatening. It's, it's a terrible medication. But they put him on it, and he started showing terrible signs. And for 10 days, he got worse and worse and worse. And then he broke out in something called Stevens Johnson's rash. It's rare, and it's almost always fatal. It's when the dermis and the epidermis separate. So it would be a terrible death. And they had, their only hope was to get him back to the United States, a 40-hour trip and with the layovers. And so they got him on a plane. Heather had talked to the pilot and said, this is his only chance. This is his only chance. And she said, I watched him fade in front of me. But I want you to understand this intentionality of God. She went to the bathroom. He, he fell asleep. She crawled over him. She went to the bathroom, and she sat on the floor of the bathroom in that plane and cried. And she said, I cried out to God, and I said, I need help. I need help. I can't do this. Psalms 34, 15 says, The eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous, and his ears hear their cry. Heather doesn't know how long she, she cried. She said, I just sat in there. I was just a basket case. And I heard this. And she said, I got up and I wiped my eyes. And there were four men standing in the hallway. And the man said, are you all right? And she said, yes. She said, I'm a doctor. And he smiled at her and he said, well, we're all doctors too. Us and the 96 passengers on this plane are all doctors. And she explained to him what was going on, and he said, we have the top-tier infectious disease doctor in the United States on board this plane. We'll get him. And then they told her, you go rest. We're going to take care of your dad. She went off by herself, and she prayed, and she wept. But she said, I had joy inside me because I thought, he loved us enough that he picked a hundred doctors to be on the flight with us or us to be on the flight with them. She said, I was blown away by his intentionality. You know, uh, her dad, when, he, when she woke up, she said he was stronger. Eventually, he was healed completely of that disease, but she said... He went through a time with it. But she said, if it hadn't been for the doctors, I wouldn't have known what to do in some of these instances. You know, maybe you're on a journey right that, like that right now. Maybe, maybe you're Heather and you're watching someone you love fade away with dementia or maybe it's a physical illness. Or maybe you're like Kyle and you've got disease or dementia in your body, something that's not right. You may be fearful, but you are not alone. I want you to remember that you've got the Spirit of God inside you. Heavenly hosts are all around you. Jesus Christ himself is interceding for you in the heavenlies. And the Holy Spirit interceding on earth. You're covered. You're covered. On this pathway of joy we run, we have choices to make. But God laid out a plan. My path is different than your path and your path and your path. We're all on a path. And God says, if you stay on this path 
and you rejoice on this path. I can give you joy in the middle of the worst circumstances of your life. I want that joy in my life. You know, there's a, uh, if you know me well, you know that there's a poem that I love. I am not a poetry fan, by the way, but I am of this one poem, and it's by Robert Frost, and it's The Road Not Taking. Taken. And every time I read it, I think, wow. And I'm not reading it all, just hitting a few things. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and I'm sorry I could not travel both. But being one traveler, long I stood, and I looked what down one as far as I could. And having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no steps had trod. Oh, I kept the first for another day, but knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted I would never come back. Two roads diverged in a woods, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and it's made all the difference. You, if you choose to follow Jesus Christ, you've chosen the road less traveled by. That's a shame, isn't it? But it's true. And you will find out that there is joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's why you had to sing that Baptist song. <laughs> I, I told Jerry, he, I said, where did I learn that? He said, at the Baptist church. I said, I've never been Baptist in my life. He said, yes, you have. You went to Troy Shook's church. I said, oh, yeah, that was Missionary Baptist. It? <laughs> you know, if God permits the challenge, God will provide you the grace to get through it. Unconditional love to get through whatever you have to walk through. You know, we know the verse and we know all things work together for good. But right following that, in verse 32, it says, He who did not spare even his own son, but gave him for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? We all know this song, Amazing Grace, and most of you know it was written by John Newton. John Newton was a slave trader. He eventually, he found Christ, and he became an Anglican priest, and, and his life changed. And we know that, but you may not know that his wife was very, very sick, and he knew she was dying, and he had a prayer. He said, Lord, let me go first. Let me go first. But God didn't answer that prayer the way he wanted. Mary passed away. But I want you to listen to what happened. He said, the day she passed away, God gave me the strength that morning to preach a sermon in the Sunday morning service. And that next day, I went and visited church members. And the following day, I officiated at my wife's funeral. He said, I found out something about God. He gives me strength for the day. And when I need more strength, I've got more strength. And when I need less strength, I have less strength. God is intentional in everything he does. It's never random. It's never helter-skelter. And a lot of times he uses us in the process to make these things inter interact with each other. Bridal shop in, uh, she was in San Antonio, Texas. And a, and a couple of women came in, a mother, daughter, and she watched them and they were so sad and she thought, this is unusual. But when they went up to get the dress and, and they talked with her, they asked her if she could put the dress on layaway. And she said, well, we don't normally do that. She said, well, this is the dress that I, I wanna wear in my wedding, but my dad is at, uh, I believe, what I can't remember the hospital, but he's in the hospital and he's dying. And I promised him I would buy a dress today. And he's always called me his little princess, and I, I promised I'd do that. And Amy said, the voice of the Lord spoke to me so clearly and said, give her that dress to take with her, but she has to hurry. And, and she said to her, Amy, said, take that dress, take this dress. And the girl's name was Chrysalis. She said, Chrysalis, take the dress, go as quickly as you can to the hospital. 
Let him see you in this dress. She didn't take her phone number. She didn't take a credit card number. She took nothing. She said, the Lord told me, just go now. And you can come back and pay when, you, when you're ready. They got to the hospital, and, and she put the dress on. And the family went in, and he was asleep. And they woke him. He woke up for 20 seconds before he fell back asleep. And that was the last he woke up. But for 20 seconds, she stepped in the door. And he looked at her, and he said, my princess, my princess. God cared enough in the details to change somebody's life. He cares enough about the details in your life to change so many things. This is how God works. You know, the Bible says in 1 John 3, it says, See what love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. Aren't we blessed? Aren't we blessed to be children of God? You know, Zacchaeus, I want to end with this real quick story. Zacchaeus, what do you know about him? He was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. I know somebody's going to say that. I'll just beat you to it. Well, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, but he was a snake. He was a first century tax collector. And, and he would fleece anything that walked. I mean, he just would. The Roman government let him keep all the extra money that he made doing it. So he took the lot. He was rich, filthy rich, guilty rich because he cheated so many people. That's probably how he ended up in the tree. He needed Jesus to make him feel a little better. But when he got there, he was short of stature and long on enemies, and the people wouldn't let him get up in front of them. So he climbed the sycamore tree. And if you remember, he's looking down, and Jesus spotted him, and he looked up at him, and he said, Zacchaeus, come down here. I'm coming home with you today. I can't imagine what went through his mind. That pint-sized petty thief was shocked. Of all the homes in town, Jesus said, I'm going home with you, Zacchaeus. Here we go. You know, he'd been, he was taking him into a home that had been financed with illegal money, avoided by the neighbors, yet on that day, graced by the presence of God. Zacchaeus was never the same. If you remember, he says, uh, Lord, I'll give half my possessions to the poor, and if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I'll pay back four times the amount. God radically changed Zacchaeus. See, all you got to do is get in the presence of God, and he radically changes your life. You know, I wonder how many of you need your life changed in an area. There's something that's a weight on your shoulders. Maybe you've been thinking, you know, I don't know if I can get through this. I told you last week I was going to open the altars, and I intend to do that. And you may have to maneuver, but if you want to get there bad enough, you'll get there. Some people in here, some of you have children that are lost. You need to be praying for them. Some of you have health issues you need to be praying for. And I'll come up. If you want me praying with you, I'll pray with you. And as David sings this last song, David sings this last song. It's time, David. <laughs> As David sings this last song, the altar's open. And I'll meet you there. I don't know how many of you have heard Carrie Underwood sing this song, but I listened to it yesterday as mowing had my headphones on and I bawled like a baby because it touched my heart and the words are there are no other words to say how wonderful it is amazing grace first one two three and six please stand <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
so much you have been such a blessing to us Lord help us to reach out to you this week in every area we thank you and we praise you and Lord I pray a blessing over these people as they leave this building that they walk out with hearts that are free full of the joy of the Lord in Jesus name amen amen